So when you begin to think that materiality means nothing, when, uh, and only identity means something, that's what allows someone who lives in abject poverty to vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. Because they feel identified. Like Mariam's uh, golf labor, like uh, I think you're working as an activist too. I think it relates to that uh, question, the artist's responsibility to how to engage with the workers. How do you form new coalitions to defend not only like a particular localities, but it's a global, global issues. And what golf labor was in the case of Guggenheim, mm -hmm. right? Could, would you like to talk about that a little bit? Sure, I can talk yeah, about it. Mm -hmm. um, or like other works that could be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what the Gulf Labor Coalition was trying to do was basically to use um, the particular leverage that we had as artists in a particular space and moment uh, to try to create wider change in the Gulf region around the issue of workers' rights. Uh, and so we were really looking at this kind of tipping point of Sadiat Island, which is um, a place in the Gulf where uh, the rulers of Abu Dhabi are trying to create uh, a new kind of cultural zone. It's a, it's a zone of exception kind of built around uh, culture, but also the, the, these new cultural institutions that they're building there, which are were meant to be the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi, which are the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which has already been constructed, uh, the Sheikh Zayed Museum being built in partnership with the uh, British Museum and NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, they're also part of a larger luxury housing complex, um, which derives its particular status from its integration with these new cultural institutions. And, you know, these, um, this is part of a wider kind of plan on the part of the rulers of Abu Dhabi to create a new kind of cultural tourism uh, in the Emirates, which is meant as a long-term plan to replace uh, the oil, which will inevitably run out and become unsustainable as you know, the kind of long-term basis of their economy. So it is very important to them, this kind of creation of new cultural tourism in the Gulf. Um, and uh, they're trying to kind of leapfrog over um, the normal stages of the creation of that kind of cultural tourism by basically uh, borrowing uh, cachet and collections from existing institutions in the West. Uh, so because this is the way they had chosen to do that, uh, there was actually this, this very particular pressure point um, where uh, a boycott could you know, be applied, which was that the, the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi had a mandate to collect um, uh, contemporary art from and about the region and so artists who work in the region um, were able to actually you know use their artwork in a strategic way to apply some pressure to kind of try and actually change the standards um, of, of, um, of workers rights uh, in the construction of these new cultural institutions and we were really advocating for some very basic things <laughs> We're asking for not, not like enormous, huge changes, but really just some very, very basic things for the right to organize, the right for workers to organize um, without being deported, which is what normally happens in the Gulf when workers organize. They immediately get deported um, uh, for the right uh, for workers to retain their own passports, um, for um, better uh, living conditions, uh, for, um, you know, reasonable... Uh, uh, reasonable kind of uh, rules around, for example, like the number of hours that people work, you know, the, the kind of like things like working in like 50 degrees Celsius heat, like, you know, normal, reasonable standards around these things. Uh, and uh, in many ways, we're really just asking for enforcement of the existing EPP, this existing document around um, uh, policies that the contractors there are supposed to follow, but it's not actually an enforceable document, so it doesn't get enforced because it's not a law, it's just a policy. Um, and um, we also wanted to look at the issue of reimbursement of recruitment fees. That's a very complex issue that would involve uh, bringing in a multinational organization like the ILO um, because it involves multiple countries um, and middlemen who work between multiple countries. Uh, so, you know. Uh, we worked on this for five years. Um, we actually made a, a good deal of progress. Um, we did have quite a bit of leverage. We made a lot of fuss. Um, we embarrassed people. 
Um, we did direct actions. Um, we negotiated a lot behind the scenes. We had a lot of interesting conversations with a lot of different players at different you know, levels of this, this kind of enterprise. Um, we made uh, visits, uh, multiple visits to Saudi Island, both sanctioned and unsanctioned. We talked to a lot of different workers. Um, we also talked to workers who had been deported back to their home countries. Um, you know, we gathered a lot of information. We published a number of reports. Um, and right now it's all kind of suspended because the construction of the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi has been suspended. <laughs> um, which uh, I think they would like to blame on us, but is actually a function of the falling prices of oil. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, yeah, that's sort of the, 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 the state of things at the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think in, in an interesting way they yeah. tied, you said that the basic mm -hmm. rights, right? Yeah. Basic rights are scandalous because yeah. they know that it could create a domino effect, right? Like well, organizing, yeah. students being or, organizing around certain issues or like workers organizing something, certain issues. Perhaps like a, lastly, uh, Nam Tao can man talk about her projects about immigration, how the, how the immigrant subjects articulate themselves and how an artist uh, dealing with these issues, the ideas of immigration. Yeah. You're, I think you're thinking about This Is Not Me project. Mm -hmm. Um, which we, um, we were in Taiwan um, in 2000, I think in 2005, six for a resident um, um, see, uh, scholarship um, that my collaborator Lana Lin was um, receiving from the Fulbright. So another kind of um, governmental kind of arm length that is, that is academics, but it's linked, right? It's linked. Um, uh, academia in a complicated way with different kind of a state apparatus and politics, right? It's um, what do you, like the four foundation is kind of to foster cultural understanding. Um, <laughs> so um, being um, uh, and, and uh, at that point, then to be in Taiwan as a Canadian citizen, I'm seen differently. My passport's blue. I'm seen differently, right, as opposed to the red or the green. There's different colors. There's a gradation already color-coded. We're coded by the state, by, by different, uh, through ideology, right? The blue passport dictates something, and how many blue passports are there? Um, so, um, so just by chance, I have to also, as a uh, foreign national, which is different, they don't call it immigrants, right? So the politics of language. Um, of naming. Um, I'm not seen as an immigrant or even a, so I'm a foreign national where in the different parts of the world um, American citizens would be expats mm -hmm. seen, right? Even if they're working in Hong Kong for many years and they don't have a Hong Kong passport or anything like that, they haven't been, become the expats. There's a different level of citizenship here the, the, and class right? and race. And so, as a Canadian subject, I have to apply, reapply for, um, 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 for kind of a stay visa. Uh, as, um, and, and at the moment of the application in the police station, I found these little photographs or, um, that they just left behind because people can bring in their own personal photograph and then they just have a very low tech thing. It's so analog, you can, they'll, they'll just punch it out. So what's left of the frame is just so the face is the face is systematized, standardized. So you fit in, if you have a photograph that will fit one by one inch, so you can submit your form, and then for all these other the frame outside of that, the photographic frame, the photographic remains, right, is there. But there's there's still hints. There's a little hair coming out, right. There might be a little hint of a shirt, the blue background or not. So there's still kind of the, the evidence of the person is still there. Um, so that was part of the project that we, um, we work on. We collected about over a thousand just over a few months. Um, and with, uh, working with the sympathy of a police officer who was actually helping collecting those because I couldn't be there the whole time. Um, that be then through kind of studying a little bit more of the global um, migrant, what the notion of that, 
right? The politics around that. We we did a um, we did an installation that we talk about the facelessness of actually of the the immigrants or the migrant worker. A little bit like um, Gulf labor, that this kind of social condition and the economic condition that they face without um, the political um, um, power, right? A little bit like DC, the perversity of DC. What's the license plate that you always say? Um, um, taxation without representation. Yes. <laughs> right? And it's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's the capital of the United States. Taxation without, and that's and that's the engine actually, and it is complicated. So it's not it's it. So we are seen, we as the migrant or the immigrant are seen differently through the state and through different um, countries. Mm -hmm. And I think it's deeply, deeply problematic, and it's 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 class. I think th there's another concept that uh, it works within democracy that's really uh, um, similar to what you just uh, concluded and described, which is this notion of uh, excluded inclusion, mm -hmm. right? This, this ability that the dem democracy has to uh, spatially contain uh, a contingent of various groups and exclude some from the prerogatives of a few. And that is essentially how uh, democracy functions. I uh, <clears throat> just want to make a leap from there into, um, I, had the vi I had circulated a video, I don't know who, who among us were able to see, but Ashil uh, Mbembe is talking about democracy. And very simply, he has all these two moments which I think are very interesting. He talks about, okay, what constituted um, his struggle in the 19th century was primarily the attempt to fight um, this proce process of becoming a thing. You know, the, the, you didn't want a, a big term, but in Marx was the reification, right? So what he's basically saying, okay, we have moved into a moment where we are now enamored with things, right? We want to become what things. What we are suggesting is the colonial subject was revolting against uh, you labeled mean as an object thing? or thing. Or the citizen becoming a thing. No, you know, this, re this uh, insurgence of animism, right? This infatuation with things that have a value in themselves. It's often spoken of in a positive way, but what is interesting about Mbembe is that he looks for a critical point of view and he identifies capital with his ability to manufacture things and they manufacture beings into things. So if, and, and what he says, and this is just to conclude, what he says that if this qualifies the current moment, then the struggle against that cannot be the same as the struggle that we have then. So what constitutes emancipation today? And the question that I want to ask is that we are here, and given that we are all artists, we work in very specific subjects. So there's a, a degree of specificity that sometimes, uh, even is, if it related to a larger question, is hard to correlate with a general postulation. So I wanted to ask you what uh, notion of emancipation do you uphold to when you were involved with your specific practices? That's a really difficult question, actually. I mean, <sighs> <laughs> not to say that I have an answer to yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the question of, I mean, I, while you are thinking, question of emancipation also, I mean, obviously interests us as artists. Because I always think that, I mean, what are the things that a sociologist think about emancipation, right? Sociologist idea of emancipation will be emancipation of the society. Or like what is the psychologist's idea, idea of emancipation? Emancipating the, uh, the person, the subject. Yeah, but it, and then what, emancipating from what is from always what? the question, totally. yes. right? Yes, totally. So, like, because it implies that I, the subject is bound, but bound by what? So by, you're emancipating mm -hmm. it from what? Yes, and Marx also like identifies <laughs> this very beautifully, right? Usually, Western idea of uh, liberal democracy is, is all, always like you are free to do something, whereas you are not free from, like, fr like uh, to questioning like emancipation from. It's a precise, but and as an artist, I, I think about freeing the things freeing the ideas, right? We are not just bound to subjects. We are also thinking about freeing everything. But in the, in the 19th century, emancipation meant something very specifically. It was emancipation from subjugation, from domination, yes. right? And since, since then, we have 
multifaceted of that struggle because it was clear that within the struggle against domination, there was forms of internal colonization you know, upon gender, class, and so on. So we necessarily had to unfold that struggle. But here we are today, pulverized, separated into minute struggles. How do we begin to put this whole thing together? Yes, but this is the thing though that I feel like Maybe it's because I've spent so much time with my particular wars, which also include the Afghan Civil War, the Lebanese Civil War. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about situations which basically were anarchy in practice, mm -hmm. where people were freed from everything, you know, that we're always trying to free ourselves from in, in radical political struggles in the West. Um, and it was not good. It wasn't a good situation when all that stuff collapsed. It's, it rarely is actually a good situation when we free ourselves completely from all of the structures. You mean from government, from governmentality? From governmentality, but also from all of the social compacts, because that's the other thing that breaks down in those situations, all the social compacts of, you know, that, that keep us like uh, uh, bound to each other right, that keep us in debt to each other in different ways. Um, those also broke down in those situations, you know, especially in Afghanistan and that, in that, in during the civil war in Afghanistan. Nazariyat, tamam e gunaha az yek jambe me ayet, na tawani ye mard ki khamosh binshinet. Ba Afghanistan chito amadin? و ما پاکستان رفتیم و روسی دوست ما بود و بعدا فکر کردیم که از سرحد تیر شویم میفهمین شما و دیگه چی شد و افغانستان چی تو آمدین ما بعد از 9-11 یک جای شدم و بعد از او چی شد و بعد از او به بگرام آمدیم و بعدا چی شد به افغانستان چی تو آمدین ما دا بارش فکر میکردیم از وقتی که یک طفل بودیم طبیعتا و وقتی که موقع مساید شد با ما ای فرق نمی کرد که چطور بیاییم و پولش واقعا او هم یک حصه خود داشت آیا همه چیزی که شما آرزو داشته نمو تو بود؟ من نمی دانم چه قسم سوال شما رو جواب بدم چرا نه؟ بیاد ندارم ما چی چیزی خواهش داشتم ترجمانان شما آیا احترام می شد و اهمیت قائل می شد وقتی شما می گفتین فلانی شکنجه کرده؟ اقیام حقاقی استخبارات الاسکریه بتجاوزات اثناء المقابلات ننظر الى تلك الشهادات على انها شهادات مخطوطة ما همه چیز را بررسی می کردیم که واقعیت داشته باشد و ساختگی نباشد لفبرکتها هل يتحدث المترجمون العاملون مع الاسکریه عن دواحي قلقهم المتعلقه بأساليب او تكتيكات التحقيق لم يحدث وأن تحدثوا مع المحققين فلقد جرى إعطاءهم الأوامر بالتحدث مباشرةً إلى السرجن في المسؤول عن الكادر حول ما إذا كان لديهم أي أسباب من القلق ولا أتذكر إن ذلك قد حدث ولعله قد حدث لقد رأينا مترجمين يعملون معنا لفترات قصيرة ولعلي حذرت بأنهم لم يكونوا على وفاق مع شخص ما في العمل أو لم يعجبهم شيء ما حدث اثناء العمل ولذلك تركوا العمل لقد كانت مشاعر بخصوم فذهبت بعد هذه الجلسه الى المشرف في الاستخبارات عنها فقال لي بان ذلك كان خطأ وانه سيتحدث معهم ولكن يتذكر رؤيته يمر امام غرفه التحقيق وكان قد راى ما كان يحدث فيها كان انطباعي بانه يعرف ويتسامح مع ما كانوا يقومون به فقد قال لي بان عليهم ان يكونوا اكثر قسوه في باجرام مما كانوا عليه في غوانتنامو ولقد كانت تلك طريقته في تبرير التكتيكات التحقيق لا أتذكر التاريخ ولكن يتذكر إن أي قال لي بأن سيرجنت إكس قد ركل المعتقل رقم 421 في أعضائه التناسلية أثناء التحقيق فقمت على الفور باستدعائي إكس فقمت على الفور باستدعائي إكس إلى نقطة تجميع المعتقلين للتحدث معها حول ذلك الإدعاء فقالت لي إنها لم تركل ذلك المعتقل في أعضائه التناسلية ولكنه فتح ساقيه أمام قدمها هل قامت على الأطباق تركله في أعضائه التناسلية 
كلا جواب لا هل كانت على الاطلاق في وضع يسمح لنا بركله في منطقة أعضائه التناسلية وقت تساغاب بزنقنون عندما كان راكعا على ركبتي فإنها وضعت قدمها بينهما هل رأيتها تركله في منطقة أعضائه التناسلية عندما كان في ذلك الوضع كلا لا هل كان من المحتمل أن تكون قد ركلت نعم ولكني لم أرها تفعل ذلك هل يمكن أن يكون شخص آخر قد رآها تقوم بذلك؟ لو كانت ركلت لكنت أنا من رآها هل يبدو أي وثوقا وصادقا بالنسبة لك؟ كلا ولماذا؟ لأنه لا يترجم الكثير مما يقال عند تفصيل إجابة لنا وكيف تعرف ذلك؟ لأنه حيث ما يقول الشخص شيء أن يتعلق بالطالبان فإنه لا يذكر في الترجمة ما هي عدد المرات التي عملت فيها مع أي؟ حوالي أربعة أو خمس مرات كم مرة من تلك المرات كنت مع أسد بي تي 421 مرة واحدة فقط هل تعتقد بأن أي يكذب شأن قيام شخص ما بركة المعتقد لا أعتقد بأن لديه سببا للكذب فقد كان غاضبا بسبب أوضاع التوجر التي كنا نستخدمها مثل أركائه على ركبتيه ما هي الخلافات التي جعلت السرجان والتي جعلت السرجان يلجأ إلى وضع مصطلح استخدام رجلين اثنين عند إجراء التحقيقات مع المحتجزين؟ I think that's a very good point because is it either or? Is it either we have nothing or we only have the liberal uh, way to collate those subjectivities? What can constitute something that goes against that but it's not falling into nothing? And that's, that's the question I would like to see answered because I feel like in the West, democracy is really seen as like this static dead thing. It's like it's a form, it's a thing. It's a, it's a form that is, is complete and... Uh, it, it, it is not questioned and it's not revised and it's not like continually remaking itself but that's what democracy is supposed to be it's supposed to be a process not a thing right not a finished form it's supposed to be something that's constantly being remade between the state and its citizens right um, it's supposed to be a compact like an, an agreement right um, it's not supposed to be like this fixed set of laws that you can't like remake mm -hmm. when they stop working um you know so i think you know that that's 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 where it that's where it falls down in the west for me that's yeah Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, yeah, it's complicated. This is totally a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm totally in agreement that it's complicated. Yeah. Mm. And I'm actually going to say that I'm the pessimist, mm. maybe even mm. further, is that, that I think the notion of emancipation is absolutely beautiful, but I don't know I believe in it. I don't know if it's e entirely possible. Mm. We're bound in so many ways to each other socially, culturally, and politically and economically. Um, but also any sort of, I'm skeptical. I'm totally skeptical of any sort of um, promise of emancipation, mm -hmm. let's say. Because I think having lived through a war um, and its promise, and then its failure, and then the exodus of thousands, millions of people the Vietnamese but leaving the country because they were looking for a different kind of emancipation. But isn't that the Black Lives Matter, for instance, the, the contemporary movements? I think I totally see your skepticism, mm -hmm. right? We had that skepticism in the 80s, like a kind of a modernist understanding of the idea of emancipation, right? But the, is the Black Lives thing. Matter looking for emancipation? I think they're looking for reparations. But also, like, <laughs> while emancipating the subject. But like re the reparation, if it's only de de defined in terms of compensation, can be a process of incorporation and impacification. So this, this, this speaks of the limits of the democratic resolution of certain problems. You, now you complain, so now you give you something. But that something comes at a price of the subjectivities that you that you enable are the ones that we want you to have, which are consumerist type of subjectivities that can only be expressed in such a way. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's kind of a, a Trojan horse, so to speak, if it's mm -hmm. just... Because there is the Black Lives Matter, but also there is Kurd Kurdish uh, movement, right? They're, they have this also like comes from the Maoist tradition of cultural revolution and then using 
like a subject, a, a kind of like invented subject as a like a woman warrior, for instance, right? But the, the, those are mo moments that, but they are re really reflection of the history. They are not the same thing, right? They are they know very well, and I think Black Lives Matter too. They know they everybody like really equipped in that sense. That's well, how Black I Lives think. Matter is asking for the promises made during the civil rights during the era of the civil rights movement, the promises of those laws to actually be fulfilled. They're, they're, mm. they're, acting, they're asking for laws that have already been enacted to actually be enforced, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you <know>? Yes, the, <laughs> the promise of that kind of emancipation. Yeah. However, th of course, with the recent film of 13, mm -hmm. um, it's also a law. Yeah, that, that has a loophole. It a, mm -hmm. has it a has huge a loophole. loophole. So yeah. then the, the simple, for me, Black Lives Matter is, is a simple factor is like stop killing us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of request rather than 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 only economics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So we are also like the second time we said yeah. that time uh, <laughs> <laughs> we reach our time. Limit. So like I would like to thank you all. It was a fascinating. So, but I think that we were just starting. Obviously, yeah, we <laughs> there a lot there. of like things on the table. Hopefully, like the audience yeah. who's watching, they will continue yeah. the discussions. But also, like I would highly suggest anybody who's watching this video to check the individual website and the work of this amazing artist that who are actually working on this these subject matters for a long time. So these are only the maybe tip of the iceberg that we kind of uh, scratched. <laughs> yes, we, we start the third round now. <laughs> Thank you very much.